Hello, my friends. Welcome to Stepping Into the Light, the series that I'm so proud to bring to the world and the guest, the caliber of my guest. And one of them today is Madame Eleonor Austin. I call her the LinkedIn Queen, but she's going to tell you more about who she is. Uh, Eleonor, before I give you the mic, number one, Thank you so much for being here, like from the bottom of my heart, right? Like the work you do, and I'm going to be very transparent with everybody. I'm going to bring uh, my clients to the show because I'm so proud of what you do. So that's why you're going to see clients, past clients, because you are among the women who inspired me to write the book and do the TEDx. Really? Yeah. And as Can we are recording, really? yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And as we are recording this, so this is going to be a podcast as well. So when you watch or listen later, um, we are a few days from the launch of the book. And that's why we are here today, because stepping into the light is really an you know, um, a space and time where we explore what it means to be visible. Mm -hmm. And if you are new to the social media love planet, visible means, and we just went through it with Eleonore, visible means the V is your voice, your ideas, right? Your stories of life. The second I is your irresistible offers. Then your belief, not only the belief in yourself, but the belief into your clients, the belief into your offers, your leadership and your expertise, because most of you, I would bet that is watching this video or listening to that podcast, you have a kind of an expertise and you transform in, transformed it into a business idea. And that's how you are carrying the business. But then what happens once the expertise is here, as we know, there is more than expertise to building a business. There is so much more. And one of the things that it requires to acquire clients is to become visible. And sometimes we are not visible because we're not online, even though we want to be online, or we are online, but we're still not visible. We're not vulnerable, we don't share our story, and then we're like kind of, um, I don't know, like we're like bland, flat, <laughs> right? We don't stop the scroll, right? Because it's very scary to be as, close as you can be from being authentic and share your stories. I'm not sharing stories of bleeding stories like wounds and stuff like that, but the stories that really shape your business and the stories that your ideal client's going to say, oh my God, she's my girl. She went through this. I can do this too, right? So Eleanor, I'm going to shut up because I want you to say who you are. Welcome to Stepping Into the Light. Tell us who you are, where you are talking from, and who you serve in the world. Thank you so much, Angelique. It really is an honor to be here with you. And I love the title of your podcast, Stepping Into the Light, because I believe that each of us has a light within. And sometimes we dim it. Sometimes we allow others to dim it. But that's why my program is called Shine on LinkedIn, because the people who I work with, usually women, as well as men who are allies of women, and we know we have something to give when typically people will come because they want to learn how to leverage LinkedIn to grow their brand, their business, their career. And at the same time, what I've learned and what they learn is how to connect the dots of their life so they shine. And when they shine, they shine in life as well as on LinkedIn. So they, through this process, it's called the 5P method to master LinkedIn, that I take them through the very first P is purpose. And kind of the way Simon Sinek speaks is that people don't really care what you do until they know why you do it. So we go a lot into that why. 
uh, so people will, or so my clients and each person can articulate their purpose, not only their purpose in life, but relative to who they serve. And that's the exciting, exciting part. Because once they do that, then we can develop their brand story, which becomes their profile on LinkedIn. And we all want to be proud of our LinkedIn profile. And from there, what we do is we say, okay, if our profile is the home of our professional identity, then who do we want to invite into our home? And that becomes the people in our network. And then at the same time, when we invite those people into our home, we say, okay, now what do we want to talk about? And that becomes our presence on LinkedIn, how we show up, what we talk about, what we become known for. And since we've gone through four Ps, let's do the, five, the fifth, and that is your progress. So it's up to you. What are the objectives that you have on LinkedIn? How do we measure them? And that becomes your progress as well. So in terms of who I am, when I look at your visible and, and what visible means, your last E is expertise. And my expertise comes from having been a journalist and then going into marketing and market research in the tech world. And so now I, as a journalist, I help you uncover your story and market yourself on LinkedIn. Yes, and that's something we share, you and I. Both and I were journalists for a long time in the same broadcast outlet. Broadcast yes, outlet. exactly, yeah. CBC. Yes. <laughs> and I am, speaking of CBC, we are both in Canada and both on the east coast of Canada. Yes. Proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> While we also serve internationally. Yes, that's true. So, Eleonore, um, um, so the, the purpose of that interview together is to share uh, your journey with visibility as well as it's an opportunity that I decided that in that show, if there is any question that you want coaching on around your visibility, we'll have room for that as well. But before we deep dive into um, the question I have for you, I would like to hear from you what type of leader girl were you that really shaped who you became today as the owner of um, New Marketing Today? So what kind of leader? No, what kind of little girl? Oh, what kind of little girl? Oh, well, my yeah. gosh. Yes. I, I have a picture of her right here. Um, anyway, the kind of little girl that I was... I was the youngest of six children and I felt like I was in a movie every day because these were high achievers and they were doing things that I thought were so fantastic and I couldn't do them. Well, the only reason I couldn't do them is because I hadn't yet learned how, but I looked at them as being like, in this movie, in this TV show. Um, and I looked up to them, like the spotlight was on them. And so what I decided to do in response was to try to do every single thing that they did. You know, one was a track star, so I did the same race. Another in basketball, I played basketball. Um, another a pianist, another in the band, another in choir, you know, I did all of these things, uh, horseback riding, and um, tried to be all of those things in one person. And so after a while, I realized that to become a journalist, I could be telling stories about all these interests I have because I developed great curiosity about people, and about things that they did and why they did them. And so I think I see that as a bit of my purpose or a bit of the superpower that I have is that curiosity. And I, I guess my purpose really is in helping people see their purpose, you know, to take that curiosity that I have about other people and begin to ask those questions. You know, I've got the 15,000 hours of interviewing experience as a journalist to take that and to try to help other people see who they are. 
So as a little girl, I guess I was a, an observer. I, I loved to um, partake, like I loved to do things. And um, truth be told, I guess as the youngest, I might have enjoyed being the center of attention. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, but in the end, I think I just loved shining the spotlight and helping people tell their stories. I love it. So let's dive into our journey right now. I, I want to, I want us I want you to bring us maybe to a time where you you um you kind of were hidden as a woman entrepreneur and what sparked the shift for you from staying hidden to stepping into the step to the to the spotlight uh, online whatever is the spot you def define the spotlight right but what do you remember can you bring us back to that moment where something sparked into into you to shift and and want and desire to become more visible to the point that you became that linkedin expert well it's interesting because i love shining the spotlight on other people so you know, it's what I was trained to do as a journalist is to do stories on other people. So to shift that, really the first time that that happened was deciding to be on Facebook. And that was my first social media, I guess. Not, I didn't do that as an entrepreneur, but it was the first time where I kind of hesitated because it meant being me in this public space even though i'd been on air before i was on air as a journalist telling other people's stories and then another time when it kind of hit me was when i was asked to do a webinar and i thought yes i want to do this because i have so much to share i have tons of ideas and expertise to share that's going to help people but then all of a sudden i realized i wasn't doing it And as the date was coming closer, it was like, no, can't do that one. <laughs> and then set a new date. Oh, nope, can't do that one. And then it was a shock to me to realize I was stopping myself from being visible. And I'm assuming that that's what it was about because there's a sense of that vulnerability or perhaps not being ready or not knowing what to say or being able to do it in a way that was going to be valuable and helpful in a short period of time. And so I'm not sure that I knew I was hiding, but I definitely was hiding and potentially it was hidden from me what I was hiding <laughs> <laughs> until I made the revelation that, okay, I'm keeping myself from doing this. So let's just do it. Let's make it happen. I love a deadline. So give me a deadline and I will show up. I will be there. So that's and a good segue, uh, Eleonor, because that requires, you know, uh, to be willing to be uh, imperfect, right? Especially the first time and even forever like you you never know we could have like in in two seconds we could have a tech problem right that is out of our control right so how how was it for you to embrace that authentic self and and i know it's a it's a work we do all the time right but i want you to to bring us to when you remember like really paying attention to this or maybe if you have examples where you felt you know okay i'm gonna do this with imperfections and I'm going to still impact the audience in front of me. Anything that comes to mind when I talk about this? Yes. So the first time that I really told my story was when I spoke at a conference. I'd spoken at conferences before about LinkedIn, but it really is, you know, the coach in me who's speaking. But at this conference, I was asked to speak about my own story. And that was incredibly difficult for me because, again, I resisted. 
Uh, and I think partly because there was a sense that your story needed to be one of overcoming. And I wanted it to be, of, of course, authentic and true. But I have to say, you know, I've had a I've had a good life, but all of us go through things that are difficult that we do need to overcome. But what was my story? Because we all, I think all of us, and I see this with clients, we don't know or don't think that we have a story. So we all do. <laughs> but it's a matter of discerning what those dots are in our life that we connect that are relevant to create our story that has relevance to our audience. And I think the biggest thing was to try to say, okay, well, what was it that I overcame that made me to become me? So for instance, you know, why did I choose shine on LinkedIn? And I think often it was because as that youngest child of six, that I often did dim my own light in shining a big light on them. And I understand what it's like to perhaps hide um, that, that light. And so what in doing that story, I realized, okay, well, actually people responded really, really well. They liked that they related to it. They found me inspiring is what they told me. And I know and love helping people discern their story. So when we have a purpose and one that appears to help people, you know, when clients tell me how grateful they are because they now get to see themselves more clearly and in articulating their story, they get to live who they are. And it's, as one client said, it's opened the floodgates <laughs> because so much has happened since, you know, for the first time in their 35 year career, they've been nominated for big awards and winning them. Uh, people are connecting with them daily rather than weekly. People are asking to collaborate and do business with them. They're being asked for media interviews. So when I see the results that they're getting because of the work that we're doing together, that makes me feel like I do need to let people know because if they want that to happen for them, I shouldn't be hiding. And I still do um, because I am a bit of a perfectionist. And, um, but, you know, just, so I've seen so many people take imperfect action and I'm, I don't know if envious is the right word, but I admire them doing that. And nothing, you know, all the knowledge that we gain in this world, it really means nothing unless we put it into action. So by me becoming more visible, I know that it's not about me. It's about helping people know what's possible for them. So that in just reframing that allows me to have greater purpose in knowing what to say and knowing it's okay to say it. And I love this because this interview together, I did. we didn't prepare anything, is a proof that you are opening yourself to being completely imperfect because you don't even know the question or anything but you trust the journey because so many women need to hear our message and that it's safe like we have okay there are five billion people on social media 66 percent of the world population according to statista that's a lot of eyes right but a lot of potential clients so We cannot hide. We have some people to help in that world. That's right. <laughs> And, you know, I appreciate you nudging me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love. Exactly. And um, I love the name of your company because, you know, it does bring together two things that people don't normally think of 
as belonging together. But for me, the one thing that brings us all together and the one thing I do believe the world needs more of and needs to see us express more is love. You know, in one year, kind of the one year when you and I started to collaborate, it was a year where my word for the year that I chose, I thought, what is the one thing? Because before that, my word for the year had always been things about work, but about me being better at work. You know, it was, you know, about being intentional or about being productive or like, get it done or ship it, you know, things like this about, you know, like, let's just get it done. Right. But this one year, I thought, what is the one thing that means the most to me? And I'm going to make that my one, that's going to be my word. And I chose love. Wow. And then you and I started collaborating right after that. And I thought, that's amazing. I mean, we had known each other before. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I so it's, it. uh, I, I am totally in sync with not only your name, but the meaning behind it, meaning the name of your company and what's behind it, but also how you operate and all that I've learned through um, mind magic. I'm loving that. And how that is helping me understand, you know, how we do resist and just not to be hard on ourselves, like to, to just recommit and do it. Yes. And, you know, there was a woman when you taught, when you asked about me as a little girl, I remember, and, and I'm not, I'm not sure for sure if this had any influence in me becoming a journalist, but I, one of the people who I admired was a TV journalist and her name was Joan Donaldson. And she had a TV program on CBC where you and I both both used to work, I in radio. And she often interviewed people about books. But I there was just something about this woman who is on TV. And you know, a lot of the the presenters at the time, of course, were men. And I don't even know that that stood out for me, but somehow I related to this woman. And she just seemed to talk about things that had meaning. And, you know, I guess when I think, you know, fast forward all these years, that's what I love is helping people bring meaning, not only to their stories, it's really about their life by understanding their story better. Yes. Yes. I love this, Eleonore. And, and so, Joan Davidson. <laughs> or Donaldson. It might have been. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. I'm, I'll be interested to go back in the uh, in the archives okay. of <laughs> probably was the TV that you had to crank up like this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I would love that vintage. <laughs> no, but I had one. So I think my very first TV in Canada, so I moved 25 years ago in Canada from France, right? And then with my... Say bon. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a TV like this and it was green, it was broken. And so whatever was going on, it had to be green. So we had to crank it up and it, were, it was green anyway. <laughs> and I'm like... When I remember that, I'm like, wow, I'm co I come from the past. <laughs> <laughs> but you zoomed into the future. <laughs> and I zoomed into the future. We're so good, Eleonora. Look at us. I love it. <laughs> so talking about this, you know, can you share with the women entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs that are watching? Hello, by the way. Thank you for being with us. And those of you who are going to be watching after or listening to the podcast know that your voice, voice matters. So share with us what comes up for you, because I always go back and answer and put you in touch with Eleonore if you need to and everything. OK, but I want to know um, what can you share about uh, visibility strategies that really propel your audience uh, development and growth? Because you are one of those queens where you say boop and everybody aggregates and comments and she, like, what is the magic, Eleonore? <laughs> what started this? Like, 
even like what like I don't ask you for a theory or anything but what do you think what was the propeller behind this you know I am grateful for the people who do engage and I think the reason they do is because it's about relationship building and I really am all about the other person and it's not a strategy, but I've learned that it is a strategy. So it wasn't done strategically. It was done authentically. But what I've come to understand is that if you want to build an audience, it begins by building relationships. And how do we build relationships? It's by knowing and caring about the other person. So for instance, on LinkedIn, begin by commenting on other people's posts. Now there's a whole strategy, of course, behind that, like whose posts? So if we, you know, again, if we go through the 5P method, by the time we get to your presence on LinkedIn, we know who you are, who you speak to, what you stand for, and what your themes are, what the things are that you want to be known for. And so we know who's you know, um, whose posts or whose content you want to be engaging with. And we know the kind of engagement you want to have, like what it is you want to be speaking about and known for. So I think that's, you know, if there's one thing, it's about relationship building. So it's who you should be building relationships with. And because we know who, we also know what it is that you're going to be speaking about. So I think that's probably the biggest thing is when it comes to visibility, it's being authentic, but also it's again, being meaningful and purposeful. That also means the kind of comments that we make are not ones that are just, oh, great story, great post. They're ones that augment the conversation or take it to a new place, you know, bring your curiosity, it's thoughtful commenting. So commenting is one thing. And then really the other thing is, of course, you know, in order for your message to be seen, we do need to build our network. And I always say that LinkedIn, you know, because that is my my platform of choice, but LinkedIn isn't about collecting connections. It's about creating connection. At the same time, knowing how the algorithm works, when we have a larger network, our message will be seen by more people. So it's important that we do build a sizable network, but again, that we build it in a meaningful way. Then we come, it comes back to our own content. So I noticed a big difference for me because I did become a little bit invisible because I knew I needed to rewrite my LinkedIn profile. I mean, I write them for other people or I guide people to write their own and help them edit that. Love that. But to tell you the truth, like some of my clients have been before coming to me, there was, I had certain shame in my own. I just knew that it could be better. It wasn't, it wasn't what I do for other people. It didn't have my brand story there. Or, you know, we can have many brand stories, but it didn't have really a brand story that I was proud of. So I kept thinking, oh, I'll rewrite it or I'll write it. Or, and in all that time, I was not really posting. I was not showing up the way that, I help my clients show up. And in that sense, I was really being inauthentic to my brand. So finally, I did write my brand story. I wrote, I rewrote my, uh, my about section. And, you know, I, I actually was quite good at, at changing up my headline. Uh, but really, <laughs> my about felt like an essay that I was writing in grade nine, you know, it was a book report that I needed to do. Uh, but finally, because, you know, it's, I love the expression that uh, it's difficult to read the label from inside the jar. 
And so it's sometimes difficult to write about ourselves, which is why we hire coaches to help us. Um, so I think I was a bit stuck in that situation. So finally, I wrote it the way I know to write other people's profiles and about sections. So once I did that, then I felt liberated to be more um, to to actually um, uh, be more visible with my own content. And then I noticed a difference again that people started seeing me for who I am. They started connecting with me in a new way, just the same things that happen with my clients. You know, people started connecting with me more. They started inviting me to uh, lead workshops for them, you know, training sessions on LinkedIn. I started being invited to speak more. Um, these are all things that happen to my clients, being invited to be on boards more and, um, you know, uh, being nominated for awards. So all of these things started happening. It, it, you know, while it seems like magic, it's not. <laughs> there are certain things that we can do to influence this. And by doing that, in especially doing it authentically, we get to show up on LinkedIn and in life for who we are. Another one of my favorite expressions is be yourself, everyone else is taken by Oscar Wilde. Totally. Yeah. Love this. Yeah. So, you know, I think that that's the thing is I am authentically a person who loves people. I am so curious about people. And so to engage with them on LinkedIn through comments was very authentic. But I also believe we can elevate the kind of thinking and the kind of um, conversations we see on LinkedIn. And at the same time, we can do that in our posts, like have posts that are meaningful to other people. And when we do that, we are building connection. We are building relationships with other people. They get to see us. We get to know them. Totally. Yes. I love this. Thank you, Eleonore. Um, what would you say to your, um, to your past self? Um, you know, knowing what you know now and all the beautiful advice and stuff that you now teach and, and do, what advice would you give to your past self at the beginning of your visibility journey? Listen to Angelique. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say there is nothing to fear. And I don't even know if I knew that I was fearing anything because I think my fear was hidden to myself. <laughs> um, but once you start to see that you know, I was being reluctant to do this or do that, then, you know, be, you know, take a breath. Say, that's okay. Okay, now let's do it. And to be gracious to ourselves as well as to others. And, you know, I think that it is a beautiful thing when we are out there and we don't know what it's like to be out there until we are. It's kind of like, um, it looks sunny outside, but to feel the sun on our face is another experience. Oh my so God. Let's get outside and um, feel the sun on our face. And when we do, we start to radiate from within because that sun just feeds us yes. with energy yes. and when we radiate from within then other people see our light and they respond and they become radiant too totally and i want to to rebound on something you just said i did, didn't even know i was not visible because that that was the same for me although i was showing up online every day I was still hiding and that's why I wrote the book because, and I want to share that with all of you and Eleanor, I'm sure you'll have your own examples, but uh, you know, it, it's our mind and our body using our mind to make us believe that we either don't have time to post because we have clients to serve. That's the most important, right? Um, or maybe we don't know. We're not sure. 
and you know blank brain or procrastination or imposter syndrome so imposter syndrome is a big one among women entrepreneurs and i want to share with you that when you're in the world of social media love we we learn how to embrace imposter syndrome because imposter syndrome is the beautiful part of you who wants to protect you from changing and becoming so successful which kind of arouses your nervous system like no we're not gonna be successful because everybody's gonna see us and they're gonna give us a lot of money and money is so bad all the childhood voices coming back to us and once you're aware of this that's what allow us to have that type of conversation today we can observe and notice Mm -hmm. oh i didn't even know i was you know i didn't know like when you're gonna read the book at least uh, uh that I, I, where I explained where I was hiding, like I didn't know I was hiding. Yeah. And I'm sure there is always layers where we're hiding, where we hide. I, I'm sure of that, right? And so curiosity is key. Curiosity with no judgment, because you, you discover so much about yourself when you become visible as an entrepreneur. There is nobody that's going to knock our door and say, hey, I want to work with you. It happens sometimes. But if you live under a rock and you never talk to anybody online or offline, chances are that you probably won't see anybody at your door, right? So I just wanted to bring that back to the forefront that maybe you think you're visible, but maybe you're not. And it's not a judgment. I, I really like you and I, Eleonore, we're all about shining the light. I, 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 I'm inviting you to Take the projector, go inside, and see which corner of you is hiding, <laughs> right? And then probably this is your next key to success. Unlock this. That was my case. And I'm sure, like, the way you talk, it sounds like it's the same. Like, what, what, what comes up for you, Eleonore, when I explain this that way? One of the things that strikes me about what you're saying is about the layers. Mm-hmm. The layers of hiding. Because we reveal one, and then that's great. But then there's another one that we discover that we've been that that's been hiding, um, perhaps a little resistance or something like this. And you know, it's interesting. Both of us having studied journalism and worked as journalists. When I first started in journalism. I was told that my voice wasn't one for radio. And um, I think, you know, at the time there weren't perhaps a lot of women who were on radio. And so they looked for women who had really deep voices. (laughs) And I think that when, you know, whether we are, whether it's a light that we need to have, that, that we want, that we can shine upon ourselves, and, and look through those various layers, or if we can look for our voice, because our voice is true to who we are. So listen to the things that we're saying about ourselves and to each other, and to look for what's true. Because, you know, when you're talking about imposter syndrome, you know, sometimes we can have a, a voice that may be negative, toward ourselves. But then if we ask, is that true? Then we can have a light or a peek into who we really are and to know what our voice really stands for and then what we stand for. And then we can step into that. Yes, yes. And I want to share I really honor everything you said in that show. That's why I love talking to you because you and I, we serve people who use the internet, right? So I understand so much how much it, what it means and the impact it can have on a business when you start to come and show up from that place. Um, So I want to, I don't want to keep you too long because we've been uh, together for a while and I so appreciate it. I want to ask you something, Eleonore. I've never shared publicly my the, the cover of my book, and I wanted to know if I can do it with you. I think I can share it. I'm not sure it's StreamYard. 
me do it correctly, but I want I want to do it with you by my side. Are Thank you ready? You. Okay. I am honored. Let's see if I can share the screen Thank properly. You. Uh, share. And then which one is this one? Window, this one. Okay, what does that do? Oh, look. Wow. <laughs> And as we are recording this video, Eleonore, my editor and beautiful team behind the book, they are putting the paperback version on Amazon right now. It's going to be available very soon. Congratulations, so, Felicitation. Merci. <laughs> and I wanted to do that because we've talked a lot about my journey as a author. And so I think you deserve to see it first. Oh, it is so beautiful. The yeah. artwork is gorgeous. Plus, you know, the 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 backdrop of the the mauve, which you're wearing today. I know. <laughs> yeah. um, so what happens in your business when you show up for yourself? Are you and then all of that in mauve, but the visible the backdrop is black. And then Angelique Binet in, in white. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that is so cool. That artwork is so cool. And the woman is very cool. I know. Eh? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So stop screen. Okay. I'm so gonna... amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> your first book, full length book. After yes. your first chapter having been um uh having been published. And and you know, from that first chapter. That really was where I saw that vulnerability is mm -hmm. a strength. That's the book you're talking about. Yeah, like From Behind yeah. the Power, yes, yeah. your chapter yeah. in that book. And now look from a chapter to your own yeah. book about That's what vulnerability. You I love you say this because I want to share something. I think I told you that, but I want to everybody to know, like writing a chapter is 10 pages. It was the hardest thing ever I created, I think, compared to writing the book. But I don't think it's a matter of a chapter versus a book. It's just, it's a muscle to share your story, I think. And then, so it's the same in your posts or in your marketing. I think once you start and you see the impact it has on people, because they really see you, as you said, right? They see you, you are like them, and then you become the expander of your client. So if she can do it, their chances are I can do it. Plus, she wants to guide me to do it. So they're going to embark with you, right? I and I just want to share that because I think the more you do it, like Eleonore, like when I first started to meet you like 10 years ago, I don't know if we would have done a Facebook, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn Live. Like it was so natural today, but it took us to build the muscle. Right. Right. So build the muscle. If you choose to grow your business online using social media, you don't have to. But if you say you want, then know that it's going to feel awkward and your mind and your body is going to do everything to tell you that there are other things to do. <laughs> okay. We all know that. Um, but once you know how to use your mind and your body and you know that your mission is way more important than your fear of visibility because... When you have someone that comes from a post to your DM and say, I want to work with you, like, do you agree with me, Eleonora, that you're like, holy moly, my Powerful. voice matters. Yeah. yeah, my words matter, my voice matters, just as you have on your, um, on your, um, uh, behind you there on your yeah. banner, yeah. On social, social media love. Yes, it is so powerful because people are waiting to know who can help them. And when we show up, as you are doing more and more and more and more, I love it. I love seeing you do this. Um, more people have the opportunity to learn about you. And then more people have the opportunity to have the experience of working with you. And then when they have that experience of working with you, they learn that they too, their lives can expand and they too can become more visible, not only to themselves, but to those they serve. Yeah. 
No, I so so true. Yeah. So I hope we inspired all of you, Eleonor. Anything? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so part of the a part of the show is: is there any question that you want to have coaching on? Because I said I would dedicate like five minutes or so or less about a topic that if you needed coaching, I know we work together. So you're coached out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, not another one. <laughs> well, you know, I guess what I'm curious about, and you may have some reflection on this, because as we're speaking, what dawns on me is, you know, as a journalist telling other people's stories, even on air, that was one thing, was going from being a producer behind the scenes to being on air with a script and telling people's stories. And then going into marketing and doing presentations in front of people live. Now, this wasn't going to, you know, thousands and thousands upon thousands of people like it was when I was working in radio. But there were real people in front of me. You can't see the people in radio. And so that was another kind of experience of becoming visible. Um, and then on social media, um, posting or speaking in front of audiences and telling my story that's like another that's that's where these layers I think are being revealed that what you're talking about in terms of becoming visible to ourselves and so just in our conversation tonight that's what was coming back to me is these layers have been shed and then another layer re reveals itself and then that one is shed. And I think with each of those, I come closer to me, which I think is so cool. And so that's what I see that you're doing for people. And perhaps, you know, what we're both doing working in this space is, interestingly, people come closer to who they are and to see who they are and to hear who they are but then they get to share that with, you know, potentially 6 billion people <laughs> or 66% of the population of the world, of the 8 billion people in the world who are on, you know, social media or who are online. Um, and that's not to make people fear, but to see the opportunity that exists. Because imagine if, you know, I, I like we were talking about, I believe everybody has a purpose. And that means your purpose is different from someone else's. And when we can join hands around the world and mm -hmm. see each other for who we are, and then join in hands in you doing what you're great at, and me doing what I'm great at, means that our whole world will be better and more empowered and equipped to do more that's good in the world. Yes, totally. So Eleonore, thank you. I think that that's a beautiful bow on the on our conversation. Tell us if people want to reach out to you because they feel they have a LinkedIn revamp or something. They want their brand story come out like the links or sphinx or whatever of the internet. How can we reach you? What's the best way to reach you? Be the phoenix and rise. Yeah, the phoenix. That's the, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> rise from the ashes that we create for ourselves. Uh, so the best way to reach me really is through LinkedIn. So connect with me. Uh, send me a DM. Um, you can read, you can see me on LinkedIn at uh, linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Eleanor Austin. And that's A U S T I N. Yeah. Um, Eleanor is E L E A N O R. Yeah. Just like it is on my it on the screen. Look. Okay. Woohoo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then I'll put, it, I'll, put, I'll put the link as well directly to Clickable sure. um, in the show description so that people can check you out and reach out to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I, Thank you. I, I want to leave uh, you, so um, all of you, um, 
with you know if you want to have your hand on the book are you visible so it's it's more than just a book right it's a <laughs> it's, it's like it's a, reaching out a hand to every woman entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneurs who are at the crossroad between do i stay with my fears of being visible or do i step out of my comfort zone and how do you do that Right. And so I share, like, I think eight very personal stories from childhood to now where that shaped that journey of visibility. But for each of them, I equip you with very step by step what you can start doing today to go there and allow yourself to imagine what it could look like, feel like to be there, like opening your your camera on your phone and then saying something and then someone wants to go to your Facebook or LinkedIn group or have a DM. Like it's not just a thing for others. It's for you too. <laughs> All of you. It doesn't just work for others, right? right? It's all about how you believe in this. Mm -hmm. And this is where we didn't get a chance to talk much about this, but your energetics online is paramount to everything you do in life, but in your visibility online. So the book really talk a lot about this, which I would have never talked about 10 years ago when I was a TV reporter. That was completely out of my mind and my body. That's why it was, for me, I was freaking out each time I was live. It, I wish I had known at the time, but you know when you know when you need to know, right? That's the way it works, right? So... If you don't know where to find the book, just send me a DM and put book, okay? And then I'll find you. I'll send you a link with a book. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Okay, Eleonor, I'm gonna let you say one word to close our beautiful conversation. What is the word of the day? Shine. Thank you so much, Eleonora. Stay backstage with me. If you have any questions or comments, tell us what led you during the conversation. We want to know because that's how we thrive when we know what makes you put you on fire so that we can give you more of this, right? So thank you so much, Eleonor. Thank you, Angie. Merci beaucoup. Merci. <laughs>